Hello and welcome to On The Record. My name is Mary Mullaney and this is my record collection. This week we're taking a look at Barnum with a book by Mark Bramble. The music is by Cy Coleman with lyrics by Michael Stewart. It's based off the life of P.T. Barnum between 1835 and 1980. And uh, at the time, Bramble was working for the producer David Merrick when he came up with this idea. And he went to Cy Coleman in the mid-1970s, but Cy was like, that's a terrible idea for a musical. But if you can't get anybody else to write it, come back. So Bramble tried every living Broadway composer. He almost got Jerry Bach out of retirement for it, but eventually had to return to Cy Coleman, who agreed to do the musical. Though, as he said, Barnum got married and he started a circus and that was it. Still, the show got rolling, and in 1978, David Merrick agreed to produce only if Barnum was played by the great Jim Dale, who many of us know as the voice of the Harry Potter audiobooks. Barnum's the name, P.T. Barnum. And whether you think by humbug's a blessing or a curse, you're still gonna buy it. Why? Because every 60 seconds in this world, a delightful phenomenon takes place which absolutely guarantees it. There is a sucker born every minute. Each time that second hand sweeps to the top like dandelions up, they pop their ears so big, their eyes so wide, and though my tail is bona fide baloney with no truth in it. Why, you can bet I'll find some root to buy my corn Cause there's a sure as shooting sucker barn a minute And I'm referring to the minute you was born Each blessed hour brings 60 of them each time that wooden cuckoo shows his face, another sucker takes his place and plunks his quarter on the line to buy my brand of genuine malarkey. God bless and love him, but don't feel sad or hopping mad or cause a scene, cause there's a sure as shooting sucker born a minute. But ma'am, you might have been the minute in between. If I allow that right here in my hands, the smallest living human man, the sight of that is surely worth a dime. If I present an educated pooch who's trained to dance the hoochie cooch, what better way to waste a bit of time? If I import at monumental cost a lady fair whose head was lost while crossing railroad tracks to pick some zinnias, who drinks farina through a hose and wears pink tights instead of clothes, if that ain't worth a fuck, my name ain't Phineas. I'll say it's hogwash, well who cares? You'll buy my hogwash long as there's a sucker born every minute. Each time that second hand sweeps to the top like dandelions up, they pop their ears so big, their eyes so wide, and though my tail is bona fide baloney, just let me spin it. And ain't no man who can resist me, wait and see, cause there's a sure as shooting sucker born a minute. And friends, the biggest one, excluding none, is <laughs> me. There's a sucker born every minute is a quote that is attributed to P.T. Barnum, but there's no proof that he actually said it, especially because he loved his audiences. The original production of Barnum also included Terrence Mann and Glenn Close two years before the film debut that would make her a star. The original production was directed by Joe Layton, as well as staged by him. And though David Merrick was originally signed on to produce, he was so busy with 42nd Street at the time that he wanted to postpone the show. Cy Coleman felt that it was now or never for Barnum, so he took over the rights and produced the show himself. The show combined traditional musical theater styles with circus spectacle, and the audition notice said that everyone must have some special ability that could be used in the circus. On top of that, Layton insisted that everybody in the cast learn how to juggle. The show was rehearsed in an unused ballroom at the then rundown McAlpin Hotel because it was the only space big enough for them to rehearse the circus elements. And then the show itself was actually set in a three ring circus. The colors of my life are bountiful and bold. The purple glow of indigo, the gleam of green and gold, the splendor of a sunrise, the dazzle of a flame. The glory of a rainbow I put them all to 
shade, no quiet browns and grays. I'll take my days instead and fill them till they overflow with rose and cherry red. And if this sunlit world grows dark, one day the colors of my life will leave a shining light to show the way no quiet browns and grays I'll take my days instead and fill them till they all cherry red and if this sunlit world grows dark one day the colors of my life will leave a shining light to show the way Barnum opened on Broadway on April 30th, 1980 at the St. James Theatre, the most recent home of Frozen the Musical. It ran for 854 performances, and each show began with a different pre-show outside the theatre, which would include magic tricks, acrobatics, all that fun stuff. And then the audience was guided into the theatre where there was a whole display of Barnum memorabilia. Continuing to set the mood inside the theater, Glenn Close, who nobody knew who she was at the time because she was still very green, would be sitting in a booth knitting. The show originally ran for two hours and 30 minutes with no intermission. Eventually they pared it down, but I don't think much. It had 10 Tony nominations and three wins, and though there was a London production, there has never been a revival. This episode is dedicated to my boyfriend, Frank Hartley, because it is his favorite musical. Their ears so big, their eyes so wide, and though I feed them bona fide baloney with no truth in it. Thank you so much. See you next week.